Okay, we're going to take a look here at smart objects, and hopefully by the end of this tutorial, as I always wish you, uh, you'll know a bit about smart objects, and you'll know why and when you should use them, and the great advantages to use them, and uh, you'll realize how much time you probably could have saved using them uh, when you've run into certain situations. So, let's... Uh, let me just show you uh, a real quick uh, difference between smart objects and these not so smart objects um, and that is going to be right now <laughs> I have this object here that I've labeled smart and in order to turn anything into a smart object you just right click on that layer and hit group into new smart object you can also come up here under layer smart objects group in a new smart object either way does it and the first thing you'll notice when you do group something into a new smart object is that it gets this little icon which is the smart object thumbnail indicator it just indicates that you have a smart object in that layer let me move the layers palette out of the way now with the smart object selected I'm going to transform it I'm going to make it very small this is just one of the many things you can do with smart objects now I'm going to select the not so smart object and we're also going to scale that down small okay and now that we have them small inevitably we decide that we don't like them small so we want to scale them larger again well the horrible news is that if it's not a smart object it's going to look like this but smart objects are smart they remember what the image was like and they retain all of that data so you can always go back so when you scale something that small it's a non-destructive edit you're not destroying any image data whereas very obviously with this non-smart object we've destroyed quite a bit of image data. I mean, the image is nowhere near as sharp. So, now that you know how to create a smart object and you know one of the differences between smart and non-smart objects, let's uh, take it a step further. Let's duplicate this smart object. And you can duplicate a smart object just by dragging it down to the new layer icon and we have a second smart object. I'm going to grab that smart object and drag it right up here. And I'm going to transform this. I'm going to make this about half the size of these two. Just like that. And smart object think of it as being a file inside of a file like both of these slices of orange are files inside of this PSD whereas this non smart object is just part of the PSD so watch what happens when you edit one smart object you edit both of them because they're both linked back to the original file you can edit a smart object by going to layer smart objects edit contents or the easier faster way is just by double clicking the thumbnail hit OK, it's just going to give you a little thing saying you have to save it and then your changes will take place now remember both of these are the same smart object so watch what happens let me just draw a smiley face here, let me get a normal brush and make it a little bit bigger I'm just going to make two quick eyes and a smile and I'm going to close this and it's going to say do you want to save it I want to save it and watch what happens both of my smart objects update identically that is going to be very helpful in another file I'm going to show you in just a minute but you can also undo those changes within this document I can just hit command or control Z and it takes that away now let's say we have these oranges but I only want this big one to change when I edit them the way you make a new smart object that is not linked to the same one is that is by selecting that smart object whoops just like that by selecting the layer and going under layer smart objects and why, oh yes of course rasterize that layer too don't know how I did that but I did let's group that back into a smart object and now we're gonna come to layer smart objects new smart object via copy and this new smart object is now not connected in any way shape or form to this original smart object and we're gonna see that in just a second when I go back into this smart object, this bigger one, and I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm just going to squiggle through it just like that, and I'm going to close it, say yes, save it, and you're going to see only this one updates. So that can be helpful for some situations. It's a good thing to know. Okay, so now that you know how to create new smart objects and create new smart objects that aren't going to be affected by other smart objects, uh, one other quick thing I want to show you is replacing smart objects you can at any time replace a smart object but when a smart object is replaced it is replaced within this boundary okay that the object is when I hit command or control T you can see it's like this box containing this smart object and no matter like if I get a huge image and I put it in there it's gonna squash it to fit and I'll show you what I mean here when I go up to layer smart objects replace contents I'm gonna grab this cat eye.jpg and you're gonna see it's gonna mash itself right into there okay so, what's happened 
because it's gone right into that box that this orange was in. And it made it look like it was got a little bit bigger because this orange, you can see there's a bit of a margin between the edge of the orange and the box, whereas with the cat eye, there's no distance at all between the edge of the object in the photo and the edge of the photo. So that's a quick way you can replace smart objects. Let's look at another thing you can do with smart objects here. Okay, let's open up this other document I have here, this web award document. And we need to put the actual web award in here, and that is going to be an Illustrator document. So I'm going to come up here into the File menu, and I'm going to hit Place. Now, when you use the Place command, anything you place, whatever file type, it automatically becomes a smart object. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to grab this AI artwork. I'm just going to double-click it, and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see I've got a smart object placed in here. Now, because this is an AI file, an Illustrator file, it's vector, so therefore I can scale it. So I'm going to scale this to be as big as I need it to be, and when I hit Check, you're going to see that this it's going to rasterize it but only temporarily you can see it's rendering it there we go and it, now it's truly nice and smooth just like a vector object would be so anytime we want we could scale this up to be the size of the but document or 12 times bigger because it's vector so that's a very cool thing with those smart objects let me show you one more quick thing about smart objects actually a few more quick things you want to edit this AI file you can just double click on the layer uh, thumbnail there, or you can come up under Smart Objects and hit Edit Contents. And because this is a native Illustrator file, it's going to bring us right over to Illustrator to edit it. Okay? How do you like that? And now I want to edit this by just dropping a star right in the center there. There's my Layers Palette in Illustrator and my Transparency Palette, two palettes I'm going to use. I'm going to add a new layer real quick. Grab the Star tool. Just keep a white fill for it center it approximately, grab my opacity slider and just drop the opacity to roughly 30 percent. Okay, and then I'm just going to close this Illustrator document and it's going to say do you want to save VectorSmartObject.ai? I'm going to say yes and when I get back over to Photoshop, which I'm going to do in just a second here, you're going to see it's going to say updating smart objects and it's going to update that smart object and you can see we now have that little star in the middle. So, that's a very cool thing. One other thing I want to show you, all of these stars here are smart objects. And let's say you give this to someone, uh, you're designing it for somebody, and they see it and they like it, except these stars. They want the stars to be a bit shinier. Well, if you're not using smart objects, you say, yeah, okay. But if you're using smart objects, you say, okay, yeah, you know, what do you want to do with them? And just to emphasize how many layers there are here, each one of these stars is its own smart object. So you would have all of these layers to edit if they weren't smart objects. But because it's a smart object, when someone asks you if you can change all of them, for instance, can we make them all shiny, instead of just saying, yeah, I can do that, you're more like, oh, yeah, sure, here, give me five minutes. Go in, double-click on one of the layer thumbnails. You bring up that document, zoom in a bit, grab your elliptical marquee tool, Draw an ellipse over the top of the star, fill it with white, deselect using Command or Control D. Oops, and I messed that up. Create a new layer before you do that. There you go. Fill that with white, Command or Control D to deselect. Hold down the Alt key and move your mouse in between the two layers to create a clipping mask. It clips this white ellipse to this star. Lower the opacity to about 50%. Create one new layer. Grab your brushes tool. And in the brushes palette, which is right here, go to assorted brushes. And when you bring up the assorted brushes, grab this 25 pixel star right here. Move the brushes palette out of the way. And lower the size to about 15, which is what I'm using here. And click several times to get some nice thick sparkles. And click X. Yes, we want to save it. And you're going to see here in a matter of seconds, all of these stars will have changed just like that. I'll make them a little bit brighter to make it easier to see. Just like that, they're all sparkly now, and they all have that shine we added to them. So just like that, you can update many, many objects that you've saved as smart objects. And really, smart objects are just one of the greatest uh, things to do, uh, convert your objects to for future editing, uh, when you have to update multiple things, when you're dealing with vector files when you're dealing with non-vector files because scaling them small you can always scale them back to their original size so it's a very non-destructive and easy to edit way to build files by using smart objects where when and where you can 
So I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll go over to tutvid.com and view some of the other free video tutorials that are over there. And uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope to see you around soon.